thank you so much for joining us. Now, I'll be dev um, absolutely presenting to you some baby CPR, as well as going through some baby choking management, not the how to, the what to do when things happen. Mel is behind us, and she's going to have a couple extra babies that she's going to pass around. So at any point you would like to practice everything I'm talking about, you're more than welcome to. Best you practice on my babies, not your own babies. And she's also going to be handing out a flyer. At any point you guys have extra information, we're right behind here today to come back and ask us questions or to demonstrate and practice more. And if you'd like to book a course, process, we guys will get an offer for being here today. Most importantly though, you're here to see what to do in the very unlikely event that your child will ever, ever need CPR. It is just something to know, but never ever use. Okay, that is the key for today's talk. And for those who have probably done CPR training before, it is the one thing that when you do a first aid course, they always change how you're gonna do CPR. So I apologize for that. And again, it's probably a little bit different to last time you learned this. The biggest things are, these are your babies. This is not somebody you met walking down the street and they collapsed. The second a baby stops breathing, your whole world will probably stop as well. And CPR is never ever meant to be frightening. It's the simplest thing that you'll ever ever do. When a baby stops breathing, you just start breathing for them. And if all you do is push and you breathe and you push and you breathe, that's the best thing that you'll ever do to help your baby out for as long as you possibly can. Obviously though, a baby is a bit different to you and I. So when we talk about baby CPR, there are some differences. Biggest difference being they are a whole lot smaller than we are. So for those who may know this already, when we talk about doing baby CPR, you only ever use two fingers when you push onto your baby's chest. Yet as we get older, I've also brought my child here today as well. I do have real children. This isn't my weird world that I have here today. I do have real children. But for us today, a child, we have to start using a hand, if not two hands. When you ever come across this situation, you will get adrenaline and you will be like the Hulk. So you have to remember it's only small, so use two fingers. As we get bigger though, you might start to use a hand, if not two hands. And then if you came across somebody who is twice your size, then you jump on them. All right, the bigger they are, the harder you have to push. But for a baby, it's only ever two fingers. If a baby stops breathing and you want to do the breathing, then baby's lungs are only tiny. They sound loud, but their lungs are only this big. So when you breathe into their mouth, you only have to fill holes this much and that is it. So it's a puffer there. Small amount to make that chest rise and fall and then leave it alone. If you breathe into somebody a bit bigger, well then you breathe a bit more and to breathe into us, you give it everything you have got. Okay, so as we get bigger, we breathe a bit more as well. Just so you know though, when I say the word baby, I simply mean a child from the age of zero to one. So in the first aid world, it's only the first 12 months. Then if you become a child, you start from the age of one and only in the world of first aid, do you become an adult at the age of eight. It used to be 12, but when you now go out and have an eight, nine, 10 year old and you do first aid, you're actually doing adult first aid. I have an eight year old and never in my life will I tell him he's an adult. It is only for the purposes of first aid. But for today, an adult is anybody over eight. So two hands for an adult, breathe a whole lot harder for an adult, but for my baby, it's a puff and it's only two fingers. The other big difference is if an adult collapses, I do CPR where I find you. I do not move you. I just have to work where you are. You all know that when you run into the room and your baby is upset, the first thing you all do is you pick them up, you check them like this, you do not go down to them. And a great way to pick up a baby is to always hold them under your arms like this, and then you can start to do CPR, and then always take them to a much safer and better spot in your home. Babies are heavy, you can't carry them forever. But if you ever had to do CPR on a baby, best place to take them would be to your kitchen table, to your kitchen bench, high, hard, flat surface, near the door, near the phone, you're probably home by yourself. So the more you can do with this baby as you carry them, the better off you will be. And you go onto that kitchen bench and you start to do CPR on the table as well. If you had to, holding a baby and doing CPR on them means you can walk to your neighbor's house and you can knock on their door and they can call the ambulance for you while you still do CPR as well. But never in your life jump in the car and do CPR and drive to the hospital. The ambulance will come to you, you do not go to them. But for us, we pick them up and we start helping them as quickly as we possibly can, okay? Now, lastly, a difference between a baby and an adult. Right now, you're all breathing, I do hope. How do I know that? You don't look fully conscious, but you're definitely breathing um, because your chest is rising. Is the person next to you, is their chest rising? 
you checked out her chest, I can see that. Um, right now I'm looking, it's very hard to tell though. In a real situation they say, look, you listen, you feel if you're breathing or not breathing. For an adult right now it is hard to tell if your chest is moving and you'll probably all learn very quickly that when you bring your baby home for that first time ever and you put them in their cot, you check on them every 10 seconds because you don't know if they're breathing or not breathing and you'll poke them very, very regularly throughout that whole night because I can't tell if my baby's breathing or not breathing. You don't see it moving, you can hardly hear it, but the one thing a baby does, it shows you in its colour. Every time you put your baby to sleep and their face colour is normal, leave them alone, all right? They are sleeping, they are fine. But ever, in the event that they aren't breathing, a baby's face will turn blue. Blue means not breathing, not breathing means you just start CPR straight away. That face can turn blue the very second they start, I stop breathing. So as soon as I see blue, I start doing CPR instantly. Now for my baby, their natural colour here is very light. So I'd see blue from across the room. But if you're looking after a baby who's a little darker in their skin colour, look inside the mouth because everybody on the planet we have the same color inside our mouth so when you open the mouth and inside was blue blue means not breathing I will start breathing for you straight away that means CPR started as quickly as you picked up your baby you can see that color blue always look in the mouth check to see why aren't you breathing look for liquid look for food clean out what you can and then straight away your mouth is huge it would cover a baby's mouth and nose so your whole mouth goes over their mouth and nose and you start giving them those two little puffs of air you gave one you gave three it wouldn't matter any air is better than none these are your children you would not care your mouth goes onto their mouth you'd never hesitate if you look at the person next to you does your mouth go on their mouth oh some of you said yes well done some of you look at you go hell no <laughs> Luckily for me, in my back pocket, I bring a face shield just in case. Most of you will never carry this in your back pocket. But just so we don't share the love with the mannequins right now, I'm just going to use this when I do the breathing. For me, quickly, when I said they weren't breathing, it becomes two little puffs of air. Sometimes babies just need a puff of air and they will start to breathe again. So this will never hurt them or hopefully just wake them up. Babies sometimes forget to breathe. Some babies fall over, start crying, but don't breathe properly when they cry. And they sit there going... <gasps> and they hold their breath so long they can start to turn blue, breathe in the mouth, they start to breathe. And as children get older, they get smarter and some kids will learn to deliberately hold their breath, turn blue and collapse on the floor because you said no to McDonald's tonight and that's exactly what they didn't want to hear. So for that baby, we breathe for them as best as we can as well. If you gave them two puffs and they woke up, we stopped doing CPR. But if that baby is still not breathing, then please just push, start pushing on their chest. Who knows where we push? Who's got the rule? It's always the centre of your chest. It's that sternum. It's not these ribs. And there's a thousand ways to learn where to find that position. I don't have time to take my baby's clothes off. I just know everybody here has armpits. And if you line up your armpits, they will always meet into the centre of your chest. So for my little baby, I'm going to push right here. And if you've got my babies, you guys can start doing this. For my adult, I just push right here because that's where the middle is. And for my child, I do the exact same thing right there in the centre of their chest. Now, before I talk you it was two fingers so we found the center we're going to use two fingers and this is the worst part you have to push hard this is not a light job and when I say hard you have to push a third of the way down a third means look at how wide somebody is and push one third of that depth okay or that distance so for a little baby you're looking to push about that deep on their body for my child you're looking to push about that deep and your partner could be this big how far do you push Oh, everything you've got, okay, as hard as you can. So for my baby, it's two fingers. And for us today, we start to push consistently. We do it quite quickly and we definitely do it hard. And babies don't sound like this. It's just my airbag. <laughs> but if you've got one, then you definitely can practice if my babies are around there. Now, who knows the rules? How many pushes do we do? Who's done this before? Now, it was 15. Before that, it was five. I know, but they change it all the time. It's now apparently 30. So you have to sit here. And when we do CPR, they ask you to push 30 times. How many have I done? Oh, 50 people here and nobody's counting for me. Um, but I'm going to sit there. Apparently, we do 30 pushes. And when you reach 30, you go back. You do two breaths of air again. You come back and you do 30 pushes. CPR is simply you push, you breathe, you push, you breathe. And you never, ever, ever stop until that ambulance turns up and takes over. Or when else would you stop? 
oh, when your baby is crying and talking to you. I know you're in the zone, but you stop when they start to talk to you, okay? But for us today, we're definitely pushing and we breathe and we do not stop doing any of those things. Please, please tell me, what is the phone number to call the ambulance? Woo, well done, triple zero is all you need. But what is the second phone number? There's also that 112 number, so well done. 112 is to be used only, only on your mobile phones. It's used when there is no reception, when you have no SIM card, when there's no key or keypad is locked, there is no credit on your phone. It's also an international phone number. So when you're traveling on holidays, something goes wrong, 112 works on the mobile and connects you to that country's emergency services. Does not work at home, doesn't work on the home or office phone, but it only works on mobiles. As does triple zero, it's just your second backup number in case of, okay? CPR is not hard. They are blue. You pick them up. You cleaned it out as quick as you could. If they are not breathing, please start to breathe for them. Two puffs are fine. And if that does not wake your baby up, then please start to push. Like I said, babies are heavy. Take them now to that table. Lie them down on that table. Has to be hard. Has to be a hard or flat surface. And I ask you to do 30 compressions, but nobody in your house says to you, love, you just did 29, you miss one, just stop now, okay? It is an average. The biggest change to CPR is, breathing is no longer compulsory. If all you ever did was the pushing on somebody's chest and you kept doing that, it's actually still doing the best thing you can do until somebody turns up. These are your babies though, you're happy to do the breathing. So if you choose to, breathe, push, breathe, push as best as you possibly can. Now my babies are somewhere around here, so please practice that. I'm gonna give you guys a baby here. Never hold your baby like this. There we go. Have a practice if you choose to on my baby. Just for those who do have children over one, the only difference is where they're bigger. So you have to start using at least one hand, if not two hands. And a really big difference is hold your baby like a football. That's what you should do. Don't forget babies are floppy. They'll fall between your legs. It should be like a football. Your babies, when they're zero to 12 months, big heads but very very small and not very strong necks so we always support our baby's head no matter what we do but when you become older once my baby or my child here is not breathing I know I use a hand or two hands I know I'm going to breathe into their mouth but you always have to tilt back a child's head because when their head goes back more air goes in and it also takes that, uh, that tongue off the back of their throat so for children and adults we like to tilt back your head your mouth probably doesn't fit their mouth and nose either so when they're older you might decide to breathe by pinching the nose, opening up the mouth and then putting your mouth directly onto their mouth. Again, you give them those two breaths of air and if that wakes them up, you stop. But if that child still does not respond, then I definitely find the center. I start to use a hand and if they're too big or I'm not strong enough, I then start to use two hands and I still have to push that one third as best as I possibly can, okay? And we do not stop until the ambulance turns up or this child actually wakes up at the same time. Okay, my baby's okay. Oh, they don't look too good. Um, but here's one here, other way, other way around. Like that, like that. One really important thing to do, I'll just show you. Yeah, always, again, don't hold them like this. Um, I really way is to hold them like this so you don't drop them. Or if they actually are really small, on your arm works really well until you get them to that table as best as you can, okay? Now, is there a third baby somewhere? I've got two babies here. Can I just borrow this baby? The last thing I love to demonstrate, as you keep practicing your CPR, it's choking. Choking is probably the scariest thing on the planet that all of you hopefully don't actually ever see, but it can actually happen. For those of you who know a bit about choking management already, again, it changes just like CPR does. And then there's what you see on television, then there's what you're actually allowed to do, okay? Very different. What you see on TV might be this, good or bad bad because your baby is too small and you are the hulk when something goes wrong so you become too strong so for us this doesn't work at all it's called the heimlich maneuver often practiced in america but we don't like to do it here in australia not too good when they're a baby and when somebody's too big and you try to get around them it's like an awkward hug too so it doesn't work for all of us so we don't do that is this okay <laughs> No, he thinks it is, it's fine, no, it's right. not good, not for any baby. I love upside down, but I just can't have it when they're not supported. And I know most parents here, the second their baby puts something into their mouth, you go for it. Everybody dives into the mouth as best as they can. It is arms, it is legs, your whole body goes in and you just rip it out as quick as you can. Good or bad? 
bad because you know when your hand's going in, it's either going to work or it's definitely not going to work. And quite often you push it further down and it causes more of a problem. I will never stop you being that finger grabber into the mouth, but it's never the first thing that you do. Please note the very first thing that you ever do when a child is choking, nothing, do nothing, give them a few seconds. Your baby is the best vomiter in the whole wide world. Give them a chance to bring that food up as quickly as possible. When we're older, we don't vomit, but we cough. Give me a chance to cough. And when I'm coughing, please don't hit me. I know it makes you feel good, but it doesn't help me whatsoever. So I'm coughing, I'm okay, leave me alone. If your baby though, in the next few seconds, doesn't cough, they do not vomit, you know they're in trouble because that face is red, their eyes haven't blinked, their mouth is open, or they were talking and all of a sudden they stopped talking, now I'm going to quickly help you. You're going to pull them out of that high chair, second step is you hold that baby and you do put them upside down, okay, we want the baby to be upside down. Gravity is your best friend and if you could hold them like this, great, if you can put them over your shoulder, even better. As they get older though, you're going to sit down and the next place is straight over your lap, head towards the floor and let every everything in that mouth hopefully fall all over the ground okay at this point this is where that finger could probably go in if you could see it feel it grab it I might get that food out and once you've done that if the food falls on the floor baby is fine they pick it up they re-eat it and you continue your day okay that's all they're going to do but if the baby you couldn't reach it you couldn't feel it then definitely in that upside down position you are going to find the center of their back in between those shoulder blades and what are they going to do yeah, and we say tap, but tap's such a nice word. It's never going to be, okay, baby, let's get it out. Anyone experienced this before, you're going to give it everything you have got, okay? And you're going to find the center with the heel of your hand or your hand, and it becomes a back blow to the center of their chest. And you're all cringing like, that's going to hurt my baby. But you are the Hulk, and you want to do this because you know it's going to help them. And how many of these could I do? No, we are not there all day until it comes out. Five is good, six is good, because five good back blows between those shoulder blades should hopefully be enough for it to project on the floor. Again, baby's happy, re-eats it, and you continue everything that you do. Most of the time, gravity does its job than anything else, and this becomes something extra we can do at the same time. Now, last, last resort. If you have hit them five, six times, it still is stuck and you cannot get rid of it. Now is that time to call the ambulance, okay? They won't turn up straight away, but in that meantime, last thing we ask you to do is to turn your baby back over. This looks like CPR, but the biggest difference is baby is looking at you. They are not blue, they are still breathing. You're gonna put your fingers exactly where you did for CPR, right in the center, two fingers for a baby. It's not quick compressions, but it does become one big push. And hopefully when I do that thrust on that chest, I'm going to hopefully get that air behind that object and pop it out of your mouth as best as I could. It's safe, it's firm, I'm going to hit them there five times again and after each of those goes, if that pops it out, perfect. Five goes and it doesn't work and they're still looking at me, I reply them back and I would hit them five more times. And as long as they're looking at me, they are still breathing, I just have to get the food out and I'd repeat those two steps. Only, only when blue, no response, not breathing, then go and do that CPR exactly the same way until the ambulance turns up, okay? Lastly, as we get older, we just get bigger. So when a child starts to choke, they are upside down. They are over your lap. It is good hits between their back. And the biggest difference would be put them on the floor, find that middle position, and it's a hand or two hands to do that chest thrust. And for adults, it's definitely two hands and repeat those two steps as best as you possibly can, okay? I know you're gonna cut your grapes up into 18 pieces for the next 18 years anyway. So anything that they choke on, it is the same technique. Drink too much milk, put in too much water don't forget gravity helps you when they take too much of their bottle upside down the milk comes out and then you start to feed them again so if in doubt that gravity helps you as best as you possibly possibly can okay now that I've completely freaked you out it is nice to know information I hope you never ever do use it but you're allowed to practice my choking now you can do that if you have any questions we're right behind us here today and we have these mannequins to practice on as much as you like so thank you so much for joining us